time. I am sure that you have seen cases of cleft lip, cleft palate, lossatias, microtia, anotia and so many other congenital anomalies. To know about this and to give an exact diagnosis and treatment, knowledge of the developmental anatomy or embryology of ear, nose and throat is very much important. So let us see how an embryo develops into an adult forms of ear, nose and throat. See, this is an, uh, I am drawing an embryo in the fourth week of development ok this is the uh, this is the shape of an embryo with umbilical cord and in the upper part there is Pharyngeal arches. This is a 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6. Actually, this is the important in the development of human embryo. Of this part. Of the head and neck, this brachial arches. Brachia in the is a Latin word. Brachia is a Latin word uh, meaning of gills of uh, fishes. And this brachial arches or the uh, pharyngeal arches, they are the most important one. Along with that, there is okay. This is the uh, frontal view. Okay. This is the frontal. This is a side view, and this is a frontal view. Here you can see the. Pharyngeal, uh, this pharyngeal condensations of the tissue around the future stomodium. This is the stomodium or the future oral cavity. So these are the abscess. This is a cardiac bulge. And uh, from here, this is the first arch, the second, third, fourth, and sixth. Arch. Here also is the first, second, third, fourth and sixth. In the first one, there is a maxillary prominence and there is a mandibular prominence. And uh, this part is the frontonasal process. And uh, here, this is the frontonasal process. So, uh, importantly, this is the frontonasal process and the pharyngeal arches later developing into your face as well as the nose uh, and the neck up to the upper thorax. So, this pharyngeal arches and frontonasal process are very important. So, first we can uh, study on the or discuss on frontonasal process as well as the pharyngeal arches. Coming to the First one, I am uh, drawing only this part. So the first one, second, third, fourth, and the sixth. One. This is the first two, three, four, and six. There are six brachial arches, but the fifth one involutes during development. So they are not contributing to any of the uh, adult structures. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 involutes, it is not contributing to any of the adult structures and this is the 6th one. Okay. So, in the, coming to this, this part is this thing. So, the outer side, there is the ectoderm. This is the ectoderm, outer covering or the ectoderm. And on the inner side, and on the inner side, there are the endoderm okay and in between these are the mesenchyme okay so this is the ectoderm inner side is the endoderm and in here comes the mesenchyme okay. 
Isenkai means what? It is the mesoderm plus neural crest tissue. Okay. So what all things? This is a pharyngeal arches coming to the other leg. From the first pharyngeal arch, what all things happens? So this is the another word name terminology is these are the cleft. Outer side is the cleft. And the inner side is a pouch. Okay. So these are the clefts and these are the pouches. That is the first cleft, second, third and fourth one. First pouch, second, third and fourth pouch. Okay. So we can see what all things develops. So from the first pharyngeal arch, what all things are developing? From the first arch, one is the mandible, this thing. Develop in the mandible. Then your inner ear ossicle, malleus. This is your incus. And also, So you can see here that from the first arch develops malleus, lingus, then uh, mandible, and the cartilage is called the Richter's cartilage. This is a cartilage. Okay. So from the first arch, and what all things are developing from the second arch? From the second arch develop. Stapes, styloid process, then hyoid bone, this body as well as the lower corneum and stylohyoid ligament. So from the second one develops the stapes, styloid process stylohyoid ligament, upper part of body and lesser cornea of hyoid bone. Okay. Then, from the uh, third arch, this is the third arch, because this is from the second arch. So from the third arch, what are things develop? From the third arch develop, lower part of body and the greater horn of so, body, lower part of body and the greater horn of hyoid bone develop from the third arch. And the fourth arch, thyroid cartilage develop from the and the cuneiform. Thyroid and the cuneiform cartilage develop from the fourth arch. So, here you can see this is the future phase. Okay, this is a future phase and from the 6th task develop a tricord cartilage. Okay, so from the pharyngeal arches, from the first arch develop malleus, ingus and the mandible. From the second arch develop stapes, styloid process, stylohyoid ligament, upper half of body and the lesser cornea of hyoid bone. And the third one, the lower half of body and the greater horn of hyoid. And the fourth arch, the thyroid. And from the sixth, develop the tricoid cartilage. Okay. So that is it. And from the cleft, what happens from the cleft? From the first cleft, from here comes the external auditory canal. That we can study in detail. This, what happened to the this thing.
this part develop into this cleft develop this is the, this part this is a cleft at eighth week of indirect in life at eighth week this first Rangel pharyngeal cleft forms the early part of external artery canal and at ninth week this external artery canal is filled with the ectodermal tissue and this forms a meatal plug okay meatal plug and later a 10th week this meatal plug recanalizes and forms the external artery canal it forms the external artery canal okay so this first cleft forms the external artery canal and this second third and fourth they form the cervical sinus cervical sinus is formed okay. and coming to the pouch what happens from the first pouch from the first pouch comes the here tympanic cavity that is the middle ear cavity middle ear Eustachian tube and the mastoid. Coming to this part, here comes the mastoid. So, middle ear and Eustachian tube and the mastoid forms from the first pouch. And the second pouch, this part, becomes the palatine tonsil. Second comes as a palatine tonsil. And from the fourth, what happens from here? Fourth one goes to thymus and inferior parathyroid. Thymus and the inferior parathyroid and pyriform sinus. And this is the one, two, three. Fourth one, apex of pyriform sinus and superior parathyroid gland. Okay. Apex, fourth one comes the apex of pyriform sinus and the superior parathyroid. Okay. So, this is how this part is formed. Then we have to know what happened to the frondonasal sinus, this part. So, so this is a medial nasal process and this is a lateral nasal process. And this was the nasal pit, nasal pit, nasal plaque cord, uh, nasal plaque cord later forming the nasal pit with the medial nasal process and the lateral nasal process. So these are the medial lateral nasal process.
Okay. So this part, this both medial nasal process, they are fused together and the lateral nasal process, these are the two lateral nasal process and from the maxillary part, this maxillary process go and encroaches, expands. So it expands here. Okay. This maxillary process comes and meets with the lateral nasal process. So, what, here it is. And these two mandibular processes, they come and they join in the midline. These two mandibular processes come and join in the midline. And this maxillary process go and uh, fuse with the lateral nasal process on both sides, this side. And the medial nasal process come and join with like this. And in adult life, what happens? This is that one. So what happened? This part. So, this was your lateral nasal process. This was your medial nasal process. This was the frontal nasal process. This not F and P. This was the maxillary. And this are the mandibular part. Okay, so after fusing, what happens from olfactory pit? Here was the olfactory pit, they are forming the nasal cavities. From the olfactory pit comes the olfactory pit goes into the nasal cavity. And this both medial nasal process come and attach and form the primitive nasal septum. So this medial nasal process forms the primitive nasal septum. And this frontal nasal process forms like this. This part forms the filtrum of nose. From the frontal nasal process comes the filtrum of nose. And the maxillary process forms the upper lip, this part, and upper part of cheek. Maxillary. This part forms the upper lip and the upper part of cheek and from the mandibular part goes the lower lip along with the lower part of cheek. Okay. This is happening. So go to the face. Coming again, what happens is from the frontal nasal process comes the forehead. This frontal nasal process forms the forehead along with the bridge of nose and medial and lateral nasal prominences and the filter. This part is formed from the frontal nasal process. Forehead, bridge of nose, medial and lateral nasal process, and the filter of nose. And the medial nasal process, this part, it forms the filter, upper palate, upper four incisors and the upper jaw. The filter and the primitive palate, upper four incisors. Incisors come here. So the upper four incisors. So this medial nasal process. What all things fr uh, happen from there? There comes the filter. Then the primary palate, upper four incisors and associated jaw. Okay. And from the lateral nasal process, this lateral nasal process 
it forms the side of nose. Okay, so that is the part of nose. So from the from the nasal process on both side, first there is a nasal uh, thickening or the nasal placards. Later they invaginate forming the nasal peaks. From there comes the medial nasal process and the lateral nasal process. The medial nasal process come and fuse together in the midline and the maxillary pro prominences fuse with the lateral nasal process and the mandibular process from both sides come and fuse in the midline. So that is what is happening into the formation of face. So we have seen the face, nose and the neck cords. Face, nose and the neck also. Then coming to the ear, what happened to the external ear? So this external ear, we are coming to the external ear. The development of external ear start from the tissue condensation, this part at the between the mandibular and maxillary prominences, there are tissue condensations occurring, this part from here. Fourth week, tissue condensation is occurring in between the maxillary and mandibular part of first pharyngeal arch. And at sixth week, it forms so at six week, there are one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 6, lots of these are developing at this part, right? And these are the integral parts in the development of this This is 7 to 8. This is what is happening at 7 to 8. Some of them fuse together, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. At 7th week, some of them fuse and also the upper part come and fuse together, forming like this. And later, this develops into So, the first Tragus. First hilo goes to the tragus. Helix second. Simba conga third one. And the helix. And this is the sixth. So this is the future pinna. So coming to the pinna, in the development of pinna, the important word is hillocks of his. The six hillocks of his develop as tissue condensation near the maxillary and mandibular arches and later they fuse together forming the baseline of pinna, adult pinna. So, so one from the tragus, second, third, four, five and six forming the future pinna. That is also important. So that is all. And coming to the inside the ear, we know external artery canal developing from the first cleft. And what about the tympanic membrane? Tympanic membrane. So at 8th week, this pharyngeal pouch, from the pouch, this is the pouch, it goes inside. This is the future tympanic membrane. Okay, so this is the first cleft and this is the first pouch forming the Hugo tympanic recess. Okay, so the first cleft become the external artery canal and the second part from first along with the second grows into the uh, 
cleft as a tuber tympanic recess and from there becomes a tympanic membrane. So tympanic membrane actually this is this part is ectoderm, inner part is mesoderm and this part is a endoderm. So the tympanic membrane has three layers.